Perhaps I can help. Who are you? You sent for me, Dr. Van Helsing. Oh, thank God you've come. For two decades, Peter Cushing was one of the most recognizable ingredients of the Hammer film, whether as Van Helsing, Vampire Hunter. Be so certain that somebody took one of the bishop's spiders and master detective it Sherlock Holmes. Holmes that it wasn't in the luggage he brought from South Africa. Elementary, my dear Watson, there are no tarantulas in South Africa. Mm. Or is the dedicated explorer finding lost cities? As well as danger. the infamous Baron Frankenstein. This program looks at the varied roles of this much admired actor. There's nothing more for you to see. It's all over. One of the most popular of Peter Cushing's characters was Dr. Van Helsing, eternally searching Transylvania for vampires. <laughs> I've been asked to make a study of a strange sickness, a sickness partly physical, partly spiritual. And uh, may, may I know what it is? Have you heard of the cult of the undead? The undead? Yes. Have you heard of it? No. Are you sure? Quite. Quite sure. It is most prevalent in Transylvania and the Lower Danube. And could it spread? Unless it is stamped out. That's why I'm here. In Brides of Dracula, finally confronts the evil vampire played by David Peel and rescues Yvonne Monleur as the heroine in typically athletic fashion. What a pity such beauty must fade. Unless we preserve it. She's going to join us, Doctor, and you are going to watch her initiation. Marianne, don't look at his eyes. Marianne, look at me! Cushing played the vampire hunter four times, bringing a devout sense of purpose to his bloody task. No the first appearance was in the original oh. Hammer, Dracula. Please try and understand. This is not Lucy, the sister you loved. It's only a shell, possessed and corrupted by the evil of Dracula. Liberate her soul and give it eternal peace. We must destroy that shell for all time. Believe me, there is no other way. In the abominable snowman, Cushing again hunts a legendary monster, but finds a personal truth in the process. Forrest Tucker co-starred as his fellow explorer. I'm wondering, wondering how old that face is. 
It's seen a long life. Longer than ours, I should say. A hundred years, perhaps more. This isn't the face of a savage thing. There's, there's gentleness. Gentleness? Suppose they're not just a, a pitiable remnant waiting to die out. They're waiting, yes, but waiting for us to go. For mankind to die out? It was something the Lama said about taking thought for man's successors. I didn't understand then, but suppose we are the savages. We're what? Are you out of your mind, Doc? Perhaps for them we've been the Dark Ages. We've flattered ourselves too long. Perhaps we're not Homo sapiens, thinking man. What has our thinking brought us to? But Homo vastans, man the destroyer. When the world knows about these creatures, they're destroyed too. Of course we're men. We can only be here to destroy them. They must be aware of that. You mean we're the enemy, huh? If they can deal with us, the secret's kept. It's their only chance of survival. Up here on the ice? Survival for what? It's enough until perhaps their time comes. Doc, you better have a drink. Mr. Holmes. <laughs> there must be hundreds of similar folk stories. I fail to see why I should find this one of singular interest. In the 1959 version of The Hound of the Baskervilles, Cushing was cast as the indomitable sleuth Sherlock Holmes, chasing the fantastical animal of the title. As with many of his characterizations, he brought out the intensity and the passion that made the role both believable and human. Too late. We're too late. I suggest that you stay away from the mine, Mr. Holmes. It hasn't been in use for a long time, and the shafting is in a dangerous condition. And how do you know that if you haven't been near there for years? Hmm? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Any kind of tunneling is dangerous if it isn't in a proper state of repair. All the same, I feel I must take a look at it. Will you come with me? As an archaeologist, your help will be invaluable. Well, I suppose if you're going to make an issue of it, I shall have to come. Good. Good man. What do you want me to do? Identify anything I may find. Strange things are to be found on the moor. Like this, for instance. Did you find that? Interesting, isn't it? Could you tell me how old it is? Well, I'm not sure. But 1700, I imagine. 1740, to be exact. And the blood, how old is that? I couldn't tell. Then I will tell you, it is less than 10 hours old. Could you tell me anything else about the, uh, the weapon? No? Oh, come, come. With your knowledge of the legend, I made certain you would have known. This is the dagger Sir Hugo Baskerville used to murder the farm girl in the abbey. And more recently, it has been used for some diabolical ceremony. Who's staying? Does this map mean anything to you? Yes. It shows the way to the city of Kuma. The 1965 remake of H. Ryder Haggard She provided scope for the most sensitive side of Cushing as Major Holly long-term explorer, at last within reach of achieving his dream. Teach them. But the dream turns sour when the lost city is revealed as corrupt and violent, as he sees friend John Richardson seduced by its vices and its queen, played by Ursula Andress. <laughs> How far do you think we'd get? Don't forget, sir. They were going to take a knife and fork to Mr. Lear. I've come to say goodbye.
Is there nothing I can say to make you change your mind? No, Holly. Nothing. I want you to have this. To prove that the crowning moment of your life was no lie. Thanks. Goodbye, Job. Take care of the Major. Yes, sir, of course I will. Goodbye, Mr. Lear. Goodbye, Holly. Just that I think the the maniac might come here again. Yeah. Yes, he wants to kill me. John, what are you saying? Of course, I may be wrong, but if I'm not, my only chance of catching him is to see him away. But you told me the police didn't. In the mummy, Cushing finds his exploration of an Egyptian tomb awakens a spirit determined to wreak havoc. Yvonne Fernot plays his frightened wife, whilst Christopher Lee creates a monster with human feelings. Known against this man. I'll have to take a chance. I'll have my gun and be ready for him. I won't let you. If what you think is true, you should get away now. Or at least ask for police protection. Darling, I tried to convince the inspector, but he wanted facts. But Isabel, if you really want to help me, you'll go upstairs to your room and lock the door. Oh, but I... Isabel, I never ordered you to do anything before, but I'm doing so now. Please do as I ask. Please go, Isabel. Very well, John. John, please take care. She lives not two kilometers from here. You see, I warned you. The Lord will light our path. Let us ride! The single-minded nature of Cushing's roles often treads a fine balance between good and evil. And in Twins of Evil, his crusade to purify the souls of witches by fire brings him into conflict with the liberated schoolteacher, played by David Warbeck. Vampires. By burning you char the body. 
the soul will only recreate itself in another body and continue with its carnage. Only a stake through the heart or decapitation can end their torment of evil. If vampires exist, you will know they exist. There are many things even men of learning do not understand. If you ever interfere with the ways of the Brotherhood again, you will suffer. Take care, Anton. For your own sake. And your sisters. Altogether. The thriller Fear in the Night produced one of Cushing's most sinister performances as a suspicious headmaster totally unnerving the innocent Judy Geeson. Caleb's high drops. I must... If you step back a little, you'll see that it was in portraying the most evil character of his career, however, that Peter Cushing first achieved cinematic fame as the demented, obsessive Baron Victor Frankenstein in The Curse of Frankenstein. But don't you see, Paul? We've discovered the source of life itself, and we've used it to restore a creature that was dead. Now, this is a, a tremendous discovery, but we, we mustn't share it yet. We must move on to the next stage. We've restored life life was extinct. It's no longer sufficient to bring the dead back to life. We must create from the beginning. We must build up our own creature. Build it up from nothing. From what? Why, what on earth are you talking about? Forget the whole. Now we must take the part. Limbs, organs, and then we must build. Build what? The most complex thing known to man man himself. What do you think you are doing? He played the Baron six times over a span of, what was it, 16 years or more. No, 16. In the most recent incarnation for the 1973 film Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, he introduces Shane Bryant to his diabolical experiments. Well, it wasn't her fault. I surprised her. I'm sorry. I knew you must have a workshop somewhere. I knew you couldn't give up your work completely. And you haven't. Have you? No, 
I haven't given up. I never shall. As in all his Frankenstein films, the finale is a confrontation between Cushing and his monstrous creation. is destroyed, the Baron's quest to create life lives on, as do Peter Cushing's role in the classic Hammer films. I've been thinking about what went wrong. Too much reliance on surgery, too little on biochemistry. Now, Reinhauser is very interesting on that point. Oh, All right, here we are. You can read what he says. The creature's dead, destroyed. Hmm? Well, that's of no importance. Best thing that could have happened to him. He was of no use to us or to himself. But... Next time. Next time? Of course. We'll discuss the details later. For the moment, we must get this place tidied up so that we can start afresh. And we should need new material, naturally. Herr Adler in 106, perhaps. No? Oh, well. No matter. There's plenty of time to decide that. Plenty of time. As daylight fades from the earth, creature of wake, a of nightmares, ready to continue his 
reign of terror. This program looks at how Hammer Films have depicted Count Dracula and assorted other vampires, manipulating our fascination for the world of the undead. Dracula, James Bernard's dark and powerful theme ushered forth the screen's most famous count, Mr. Christopher Arthur. Lee. I'm glad that you've arrived safely. Count Dracula, I am Dracula, and I welcome you to my house. At last, I have met Count Dracula. He accepts me as a man who has agreed to work among his books as I intended. It only remains for me now to await the daylight hours when, with God's help, I will forever end this man's reign of terror. <laughs> Far from being simply a horrific character, writer Jimmy Sangster and director Terence Fisher created a figure simultaneously seductive and menacing. Carol Marsh is the willing victim. is the hunter who finds Dracula too great a foe. The next Hammer foray into vampirism was Brides of Dracula. David Peel was seemingly sympathetic as the Baron Meinster, convincing Yvonne Monleur he's an innocent man. Classy production values and an inventive script heighten the suspense. No, don't be frightened. I want to look at you. Beautiful. So you have come to help me, have you? Well, no one can do that, mademoiselle. No one can do that. I was terrified you were going to throw yourself over the balcony. I assure you I wasn't. I can't. Come closer. Please, come closer. You see, I... I can't come to you. Was he locked up? He's not mad. No, he's not mad. You know that much, don't you? Who got him the key? Was it you? You? Did you? Where is he? Gone. Out into the night. That's her above. Hmm. 
There's a wolf howling down there. Uh, he'll get them all astir, trust him. You don't know what you've done, but I know. Are you mad or what? Where is Madame la Baronne? She's not far away. You want to see her? Would you like that? Would you? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you needn't be afraid, she's dead. What have you done? She's dead and he's free. <laughs> Kronos, this must be done. We will not be killing him. He is dead already, but his death will bring life. It will give us the knowledge we need to destroy this thing that has infected him. Pity say! Pity say! Finish it! Kill me! So be it. Once the vampire has been trapped comes the problem of killing it. Horse Jansen and John Cater are the hunters trying to figure out the best way to save John Carson's soul in this black, humorous Captain Kronos vampire hunter. bleeds at the moment of its death. An offbeat addition to the genre was Vampire Circus, which, as the title suggests, has a whole carnival of the fiends. Visually imaginative, the film features a series of striking scenes when even the young children aren't safe from the greed of the undead. What's supposed to happen? I don't know. Would you like to know how it's done? No reflection.
1966, Christopher Lee returned in Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Here's to him. May he rest in peace. Count Dracula. Count, Count Dracula. Dracula. Susan Farmer is an innocent woman soon to be hypnotized by the Count in arguably the best and certainly the most explicit of Hammer's Dracula series. In one of the most, how shall I put it, bizarre chapters of Dracula's screen life, the Count actually enters the body of a Chinese monk to continue his evil ways. However, Peter Cushing's Van Helsing is there to draw the real man out. John Forbes Robertson plays the Count. Is the mighty Dracula too frightened to reveal his face to me? I am Dracula, Lord of Darkness, Master of the Vampires, Prince of the Undead, Ruler of the Damned! Prove it. Right. Van Helsing. You will once more see my face before you die.
Even after crumbling to dust, there's always a way for the Count to return. Christopher Lee handles it with style in Scars of Dracula, even managing to reappear in his best suit and cape. The monster is indeed, as you rightly said, a monster. He is also a vampire. A vampire? But vampires are bats. The bat. He has dominion over some animals. And bats, being creatures of the dark like himself... Don't vampire bats drink blood? They do. Vampire bats drink the blood of animals. And human vampires? The blood of human beings. Dennis Waterman is the hero battling to save the soul of Jenny Handley. couple in love, enjoying a romantic honeymoon, enjoying the pleasure of each other's company, knowing the sublime happiness of the kiss of love. But the kiss of love is a stranger here, where only evil is good, and the only kiss, the kiss of the vampire. I conjure thee. Don Sharp energetically directed the 1964 Kiss of the Vampire, in which Clifford Evans calls up the forces of evil to destroy the vampire sect and save the young lovers in a spectacular finale. That is, until the undead rise once more.
Gerald. <laughs> 